Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and browse the fantastic selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Again, go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send podcast. I'm your co-host, Roel Dionisio, alongside with Francois. How are you doing, Francois? I'm very good. Hi, Roga. How are you? I'm doing good. It's actually warming up in San Jose and I'm actually starting to sweat a little. I think today's one of the hotter days of the week. Wow. How's it going on your end over there? It's not too hot. It's uh, between 20 and 25 degrees in Celsius. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice weather. Yeah, it's good. Um, for me, it's been getting warm, but oddly, I've got a cold and... I don't know if you guys can tell with my voice, I'm starting to lose a little bit of it, but hopefully we, I can get through this recording with everyone. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be all right. The yeah, podcast I'll will cheer you up. <laughs> well, before we talk about our main topic, which is going to be on 802.11 authentication and association, because we're, we're moving forward um, from our last episode talking about uh, a little bit more of the basics, RF characteristics, and now we're going to go into... How, uh, how a device connects to uh, an AP. But before we get into that, I wanted to announce that we are giving away two bundled copies of the CWS and CWT study guides from CWNP. And we want to thank CWNP for providing these study guides to give to you guys, the listeners. So we wanted to pass this along and give this away to people who actually are looking for, for you know, Im- Getting their next certification, the CWS is is a fairly new certification to CWNP. It is the Certified Wireless Specialist, and I think this would be a great exam for salespeople, right? Because salespeople uh, sometimes oversell products when when it comes to wireless, and they probably aren't giving the right information. Uh, we see this kind of conversation online. Is that right, Francois? Yeah, I think it would be perfect for for someone that deals with Wi-Fi, but not necessarily on a you know day to day basis uh, administrating a, a Wi-Fi network, but like for sales people, marketing, even um, you know uh, support people, layer one, um, they're gonna deal with Wi-Fi sometimes, and uh, it, it's it's a good uh, way to understand the technology, uh, to be able to talk about the technology. Yeah, I think being able to talk about it and actually you know really know what you're working with and what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to market, or maybe you're just trying to get started, right? CWS is a great way to start. So we're going to give away that book to two people. And because you'll probably be really interested after you do CWS, you're also going to get the Certified Wireless Technician Official Study Guide. So this one goes a little bit more in depth as far as the technicality of things go. And uh, this will get you all ready for the CWT exam, which is also fairly new to CWNP. Yeah, it's, I think it's a great bundle uh, if you want to get your foot into you know, the whole certification uh, game or even if you have a team of people that you want to, to train as a manager and you want to get to know a little bit more about the, the technology. Um, the total bundle, like the two books, um, is is uh, had the value of one hundred dollars, so I think it's pretty it's a pretty nice uh, bundle here. Yeah, so two lucky people are going to get this, and the way you can enter this giveaway is if you head over to the show notes, cleartosend.net slash one three one. There's going to be a form where you fill out your information, and you'll be entered into that giveaway. We're going to run this contest for about two weeks, so this episode goes live July thirtieth. And it will end on August 12th. And then we will announce, uh, or we will contact the winners directly and then announce them on August 20th. 
So hopefully you guys are uh, pretty excited about this. If you're getting into wireless, I mean, it makes sense even as we're talking about 8211 authentication and association. I think it's related and relevant to this conversation here to give away these two books to two lucky winners. Thank you, CWNP. Yeah, thank you. So that's the giveaway. Just wanted to announce that first thing. Uh, and so we, in our last episode, we went into uh, a special segment that we're doing. And so, Francois, I'll let you uh, talk about it. Yes, yeah, so the 10 questions of the day. Um, uh, this week, it's going to be with uh, uh, Dustin Johnson. Um, uh, so uh, just like last week, it's uh, 10 quick questions uh 10 quick answers uh, and you'll get to know a little bit more about uh, Dustin Jensen this week and it, uh, the idea is to just to uh, introduce some you know uh, wireless engineers to the community so this week is Dustin Jensen and here it is what's your name my name is Dustin Johnson where do you live I live in Bentonville Arkansas where were you born I was born in Sacramento, California. What's special about that place? About where I was born? Yeah. Um, I was born there. <laughs> <laughs> What's your job? My job, I'm a wireless engineer. And who do you work for? I work for Walmart headquarters. Why did you decide to do the work you're doing now? Because technology is awesome. And actually, wireless specifically is where absolutely everything is going. I mean, the device in my hand, it's definitely wireless. Uh, well, um, what would you do if you were not doing wireless? Probably device side, actually. Um, I actually came from a school district and did a lot of my learning through that. And so I really did everything. I learned a little about everything. So the devices and actually uh, management of those is what where I came from and I, if I wasn't doing wireless I would have done that uh, what could you give a 40 minutes presentation on with absolutely no preparation basic wireless and how to how to design for wireless um, what what is something you think everyone should do at least once in their lives at least once in their lives uh, well ironically definitely learn something about Wi-Fi where it's not just the Wi-Fi is down. It's <laughs> a lot of times it's other things. <laughs> There's a lot to it. What do you think your job would look like in 10 years? In 10 years. I know this one is not easy. <laughs> just <laughs> It would be like, okay, to imagine Wi-Fi, what would Wi-Fi be in 10 years? Would be... We don't even know if Wi-Fi would be know. there in 10 years. Yeah, right? would it be? Or, or would it be laser talking to each other? <laughs> or lights. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Wi-Fi. It'd be, it'd be de definitely denser and denser Wi-Fi, and it would be dense, um, a lot It'd faster smarter, devices. Smarter. Smarter. Hopefully. Hopefully it would fix itself. Yeah. <laughs> Although, granted, we would be out of a job, so never mind about that. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, thank you. Man, Dustin is all about Wi-Fi. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> he was very enthusiastic, too. And, and it was funny when we, when we actually came across him at Cisco Live, he actually was, he, he's, he's a listener of the podcast, so you appreciate that, Dustin, and... I thought it was cool that we just randomly came across Dustin near like the corner of that that uh, conference there. That was neat. Yeah. All right. So next up, we got just one piece of news, which was from Adrian Granados, who we've had on the show before. He actually released a new software, uh, just a different version of Wi-Fi Explorer. It's called Wi-Fi Explorer Lite. And this is a free application that you could download on your Mac OS. And I think this is something that everybody should download. So if you aren't if you aren't able to make the purchase of the standard edition or the professional edition, Lite is definitely the way to go because this is the, the best application for Mac OS when it comes to having a Wi-Fi scanner. Yes, and you can I think you can actually download it from the App Store directly. 
Um, and I've actually, I've actually seen a YouTube video this week featuring this application. <laughs> I was like a random YouTube video on, <laughs> on Mac OS applications and it was featuring the, uh, Andreas, um, application Wi-Fi Explorer. So that's, yeah. that's great news for him. It it's is becoming mainstream. It, it, yeah. It's very mainstream now. A lot of people are, are really appreciating what Adrian's doing and he's gotten a lot of feedback from other Wi-Fi professionals. So it's got all the... The, the tools needed to take a look at Wi-Fi networks. But granted, this is the, the light version, so it, it doesn't have quite everything that you would get in a standard or professional. But, I mean, it's still something you could use to take a look at what's going on in, in mm. your Wi-Fi in your uh, area. Wi-Fi scanner. Um, you could think of, uh, you could think of uh, you know, uh, Insider from MetaGeek, but for macOS, for Mac, I guess. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. So that's uh, Adrian Granados' Wi-Fi Explorer Lite. And I do want to mention, if you do want to get the licensed versions, the standard or professional, I believe this applies to the standard version as well. As you, if you have uh, an EDU account, uh, he does offer an educational discount for those of you who have uh, an educational email address. And I think that is 50% off. We will include a link into the show notes for that because I work at a university and was able to get professional at a pretty good discount. And I use that at the university to troubleshoot things, to look at um, mm -hmm. the details of Wi-Fi networks. And I, it's this is a really great discount that Adrian provides because he also works for an educational institution. Yes, and the professional version of Wi-Fi Explorer is really a professional version. Like, it's um, if you do Wi-Fi on a regular basis and use a Mac, it's a no-brainer. It's it's you know it's not that expensive for what it does. Um, and uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I tend to recommend it to people using Mac. Cool. All right, so let's get to our main segment here. We're gonna continue on with some of the Wi-Fi fundamentals and basics and in this episode we're going to talk about the 802.11 authentication and association uh, otherwise known as the 802.11 state machine and this is how stations or devices connect to access points and it, it all comes down to a number of freak, uh, frequency uh, i meant um, frame exchanges and how the what what are those frame exchanges that occur over the air in order for a device to connect to an access point. And so we're going to go over some of those basics here for you guys and kind of break it down over audio. We'll do our best, but I will also include some screenshots. And I think I have a packet capture I could upload for everyone to look at if you want to see those frames specifically. Yeah, so it's pretty much everything that happens before the device can send traffic over the, the Wi-Fi network, right? So all the frame exchange that happens before the device is able to communicate onto the network. And when we talk about authentication, this isn't your user authentication. This is actually called the open system authentication where, but before, I guess we can we can step back a little because what happens is the APs will be broadcasting beacon frames, right? And the beacon frames advertise the capabilities of whatever SSID they're broadcasting. And so the devices hear those beacon frames and a station or device can either be uh, passively uh, or actively scanning for a network. And in this case, when a user sees which network they want to connect to, they'll, they'll tap on that on their phone, for example, or their laptop. And so then that starts the actual 802.11 authentication and association process, right, Francois? Yeah, so the scanning process. So if, if we have, for if, if I take an iPhone, for instance, and the iPhone is not connecting, and I go to my settings Wi-Fi, um, you're going to see the, the, the iPhone is going to scan for the different, um, uh, you know, Wi-Fi channels. Right, all the Wi-Fi channels supported by the phone would be scanned, and then the phone would be listening to those beacon frames sent by the APs. And after a little while, you'll see a list of Wi-Fi networks to connect to. So it's pretty much the phone analyzing all those beacon frames and showing you which uh, network you'll be able to connect with your iPhone. Um, sometimes if you have a lot of Wi-Fi networks available around you, you'll see that the iPhone will first show your first list and then update the list after a couple of seconds. And um, this is because the phone will scan the 2.4 channel first 
then reports you all the Wi-Fi network available on a 2.4 frequency band, and then we'll scan, if the phone will scan the five gig channels, and then update the list of Wi-Fi networks available, including the, the you know, networks available on five gig. Um, and then from there, when you click on the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to, that's where the, you know, the authentication and the association process starts. Yeah, and but even before that, you have your probe request. So when you do tap on that network or click on it, that's your device sending a request, a probe request frame to the BSSID that's being advertised for that network. And the probe request frame is just a frame of the station saying, hey, um, this SSID, who's, who's out there? And then the AP will respond to that probe request uh, with a probe response frame. Uh, it's a unicast frame directly to that device. And that's when then they, they go into the authentication frame step. And because what happens here is the probe response frame will actually contain all of the capabilities of that basic service set, your BSS. And so it'll advertise a lot of things such as your the supported rates that you need to support. There'll be the basic the minimum basic rate that you need to support. It'll have things like security, your RSN information. There'll be maybe a high throughput capabilities or very high throughput capabilities. There's a lot of things you can identify about a Wi-Fi network just from a beacon frame and also the probe response frame. Our show is brought to you by Audible. Did you know you can ask Alexa to read a book to you? I have an Alexa dot in my house and I had my favorite book being read to me, Ready Player One. It was really awesome because audio makes great audiobooks, whether you like to listen to books to get your mind somewhere else or whether you like to learn. Sometimes I like to read biographies. I've been an Audible listener for over a year and I absolutely love it for my commute. You will too because the selection on Audible is phenomenal. It seems like every book that comes out in print is also in Audible. So for you guys, you can go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and you can get a book for free right now. Download it and start listening within a few seconds. So again, that's a free book for you guys. Download it at audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Yeah, beacon frame and probably response frames are very similar. And that's actually, you know, programs like Wi-Fi Explorer, that's actually what they do is they analyze those type of frames and then, you know, display the information for, for us in, an, in a you know, nice table and, and graph. Yeah. And I will say part of the way you identify hidden networks is through these probe requests and probe response frames because in order to connect to a hidden network, a device would have to know about it. So it's probably pre-configured on that device and it will do an active scan and say, hey, is this network here in this area? And an AP will hear that and respond to that. And that's how you figure out some of those hidden networks that you see when you do a scan, right? Yes, and, and, and um, back a few years ago, uh, devices used to do that for every Wi-Fi network you would have configured on your device. So let's say you have your home network configured on your iPhone. It will Your phone will send a probe request for this specific network once in a while. So whenever you go home, you connect automatically. Um, they tend to change that now and they send a, a broadcast uh, probe request to anyone and then the phone will analyze the response, the probe responses and, and look at the SSID and then uh, is it, and look at, you know, is it, is it the, my home SSID? If yes, I know the network so you can connect. Yep. So after so it's that, a bit more secure. So after that probe response frame from the access point, then the device will send an authentication uh, request frame. And so this frame is the, the start of joining this, this BSS, the basic service set. And what the 802.11 authentication and association state use is something called an open system authentication algorithm. It's nothing very secure or anything. It's it's basically, the, it says, hey, I want to do authenticate open system authentication. And usually that res the response back is sure, right? 
as well. It's like, yeah, let's, yeah, let's it's like a two-way happen. packet exchange. Um, there's actually only one type of frame used. It's uh, the authentication frame. Um, there's no authentication, you know, request and authentication response. So it's, there, there's just one type of frame. It's the authentication yeah. frame, but the information you will get in inside the frame will be different if it's the if it's sent by the device or if it's sent by the AP. But yeah, like you said, it's just a two-way uh, packet exchange between the client and the AP. Uh, the history behind the authentication back in the day, you used to be able to do open authentication or uh, shared key authentication using web. Um, we all know that web is not supported anymore. Uh, it's not safe and secure anymore to use. So nowadays we only use open authentication, the one you've described, the just two-way packet exchange. Um, the question I, you know, the question is nowadays, do we really need it? Because it's just, you know, a two-way packet exchange doesn't really do much. But it's it's just part of the protocol, part of the state machine uh, yeah. right now, authentication. Um, something I want to add at this point is when we talk about authentication right now, we're talking about 802.11 authentication. We're not talking about, you know, the user authenticating using, a, you know, a logins or using a certificate, using, um, uh, you know, um, I don't know, a SIM card. We're just talking about the 802.11 authentication right. that part of the state machine. Yeah, and if you look at these frames in detail, the frame that gets sent from the device, if you look at that, there will there will be a sequence number, and that'll have a sequence number of one, and even a status code, and it'll say successful. And the AP should respond to that, and it'll have a, a sequence number of two, and if everything's good, which it should, have a status code of successful. And then that's when they move on to the next uh, the next phase, uh, the next sequence of frames, which is the association portion. And so this is when your your device sends an association request and it'll add in a lot of different parameters that the device itself supports. And this is why I like digging into frame captures is because of all the detail that you can get out of these frames. So I'll include a PCAP file for you guys to download so you can actually go through this and see what we're talking about when we talk about these frames. But the, the device will send an association request frame to this SSID and uh, whatever that SSID is trying to connect to, it'll start adding its supported rates, its uh, security capabilities, also mobility domain if that's there. And you can tell if the client itself is high throughput capability, or maybe it's very high throughput, or maybe it's worse it's than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> the SSS, yeah. Yeah, so the association frame, the request, association request frame is great if you want to study the client device Wi-Fi capabilities. You could just capture it and then you know, open it with Wireshark or something and, and then look into it and, and look at what your device is capable of doing and what your device will be able to be doing on the Wi-Fi. That's actually the frame that um, that is analyzed on the client.mikealbano.com website. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he analyzed these frames to pull out his table where he displays, you know, which channels are supported. Um, does the device support 11K, 11V, and, and uh, you know, how many, how many streams are supported streams, and so yeah. on. Yeah, and that part's really cool because if you don't know how many spatial streams the device supports, just do a frame capture, look at that association request frame, and just start expanding some of these uh, these fields here. So I'm, I'm looking at one right now as we're recording, and I'm looking at the very high throughput capabilities and if I expand that I can see the MCS map and my iPhone supports two spatial streams because it says there it's a one two spatial stream spatial stream supported and it goes all the way up to eight but three through eight says not supported and um, whenever we get AX devices we should be able to you know <laughs> capture some association response this is when things get complicated H E yeah <laughs> elements <laughs> because you're gonna if if you guys don't know with eight to eleven ax now you got coloring for example and I don't know how that's gonna look like in in Wireshark because that's what I used to to do to do the analysis of the frames but I do know that Adrian Granados has the BSS coloring I think it built in that yeah. into his application and it'll recognize eight to eleven um, ax. ax frames. 
Yeah, he live in the future. <laughs> I mean, we do have APs that are going to be shipping soon with AX. I think Arrowhive is already yeah. shipping, and Ruckus will yeah, be soon. Yeah. But so it's not really the future. Yeah, it's near future. So that, so that's the association request frame, and then after that, this is the kind of the finale, right? Of the uh, of the eight hundred two eleven authentication and association is you need that response from the AP, and the AP will send an association response frame. And within this frame, we do know if this is successful because there will be a status code of successful. And if it's not, there'll be another code in there for the reason why it's not successful. And there could be a variety of reasons why association doesn't complete. That could be because maybe it's 802.11b and it's not supported or it's uh, it doesn't support the rates that, that, um, that the BSS supports or any other capability that the AP saying is required, but the client doesn't support it. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, sometimes I've seen some error association response being uh, not successful. And you can actually uh, look at the frame, uh, look at the status code, and then you can go into the uh, standards, um, uh, 802.11 standards, and then look at the different status codes and they'll give you a little bit more information. Yeah, um, there's a lot of different status codes too. You wouldn't think there are, but yeah. there are quite a bit of different status codes. And at this point, the uh, the AP will keep track on the of the client as well and give it the association number, uh, so you can you know it keeps the the uh, client into its table association table, and uh, the client is pretty much connected to the network at this point. Yeah, and then from this point, which we won't go into in this episode, is this is when you go into security, your actual security, uh, maybe eight hundred two dot one x authentication, and you'll start to see those frames, or maybe it's pre shared key. And you'll see those frame exchanges as well. But we'll we'll do another episode kind of going into more detail of security frame exchanges because there's a lot to talk about there, right, Francois? Yes, yes. If you actually, if you're not using any, um, you know, authentication on your Wi-Fi, if it's just an open Wi-Fi network, uh, you know, after the association process is pretty much this done, you're, you're see. you can start, yeah, you'll you just the can start sending frames, frames. being transferred, but unsecured. Yeah. Exactly. It, it won't be encrypted. Um, if you, if you just, um, you know, looking at the channels, capturing the packets, you'll be able to see the different packets. Uh, but you'll, you'll see the client will start to request a, an IP address, probably get a DHCP, uh, DHCP request there. Um, and then you'll see the client starting exchanging information over the network. That's if you have an open network with no authentication. Uh, if you set up authentication WPA2, a personal per shared key, like you said, or edit to that one X, at this point, uh, we're going to have, you know, some more frames exchange to authenticate the device onto the, the Wi-Fi network before the device is able to actually send frames onto the network. Yeah, one thing I'll be interested in in the near future, maybe if I can get my hands on a Ruckus AP, is testing out OWE because that should be um, an improvement for mm. open Wi-Fi networks is using the opportunistic wireless encryption and taking a look at what those frame exchanges look like because that will yep. be uh, much different. So hopefully if I'm supposed to be within a couple months that Ruckus should be shipping out that AP that it that supports OWE. So uh, one thing I want to find out is Arrowhive is if they're going to support that as well. That would be interesting to see. Uh, I think we'll see more and more into the access one that will come out um, in the near future before the end of the year. Um, hopefully that would be nice. Yeah. Um, just to close the loop on, on all these different frames we talked about, uh, we could say that in you know, all these different frames are management frames. Right. In Wi-Fi, yeah. we have three type of frames. We have management frames, control frames, data frames. So all the ones we've talked about since the beginning of the episode, so association, authentication, prob request, beacons, all these frames are management frames, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also what we didn't say is that if you are into the associated state, you could go back to the authentication state, or you could go back to the non-authenticated non state using management frame as well. And that's what we call, you know, disassociation frame or deauthentication frame. Yep. And what I'll do is, uh, again, we'll include some photos in the show notes, cleartosend.net slash 131. I'll include the PCAT frame that I have uh, of 
capturing all the frames for uh, authentication and association. You can look into those details if, and, and we'll also include some filters that you display filters that you could use. So when you're doing your own frame captures, these are how this is how you filter out these exact frames in order to capture this exchange. And um, once you get really good at filters, then it'll be useful in their upcoming episodes once we start talking about uh, capturing security ex frame exchanges like your EAP frames and also capturing the four-way handshake. So like we plan on talking about those types of frame exchanges. And if you want to generate this exchange packet exchange at home, uh, it's very simple. You don't you don't need special gear or anything. You just need to know, you know, which channel is used by your home Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. Start scanning on uh, capturing packets on this channel, and then you take your phone or you take your laptop and you disconnect and reconnect it to your home Wi-Fi network, and you should be generating those frames, and uh, you should be able to capture that. Yep. Yeah. You don't need enterprise grade equipment at all. This is what happens with every single Wi-Fi network. So it doesn't matter where you are. If there's a Wi-Fi network, you can capture these frames out in the open. You can go to your nearest coffee shop, for example, and capture all these frames as what? people come what? in and, and uh, get their coffee and join the Wi-Fi network. <laughs> you, you, you telling you telling us you're capturing a frame at coffee shops? Oh, all the time. <laughs> all right, okay. Yeah, if I need some examples of. Uh, you know, what does it look like when there's a, a captive portal? <laughs> yeah, How long exactly. does it take to fully get connected to the internet? That's one way to, to look at it because I'll, I'll even show how I have my Wireshark laid out because I have even the time set up so I can see exactly, you know, how many milliseconds does it take to get through I don't know, something like a roam, a roaming situation. So, or how long does it take to get through joining the, an open SSID, right? In my case, yeah. it took about less than one millisecond to do that. It shouldn't be very long. Depends. Because if you have a captive portal after that, and it takes forever to load the captive portal, yeah. sometimes it, it happens. Come. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's, that's the end of our, of our episode. We talked about the 802.11 802 authentication and association. And those frames that we talked about, well, one, the beacon frame, that's important. Then you got your probe request frame, probe response, your two authentication frame exchanges, and then the association request frame and the association response frame. And that, there you have it. Let us Thank know you if you Robert. guys uh, found this content useful. If you guys want to hear more content like this where we talk about frame exchanges and how, how Wi-Fi devices connect in different scenarios, let us know how this goes for you guys. And if you guys enjoyed it and we'll keep recording some of these because I think this is a great way to kind of go down do a deep dive of some of these topics yeah and if you have any questions please feel free to ask us on Twitter or even to you know comment the uh, the, the the blog article on the website uh, if you have any questions related to the you know subject we covered in this episode we'll be happy to answer and don't forget we have that giveaway uh, head over to the show notes, cleartosend.net slash 131. There will be a form to fill out if you want to participate in the giveaway. So other What's than a that, giveaway again? The, the giveaway is going to be two. We're going to give away two bundles of the CWS and CWT study guides from CWNP. And they were gracious enough to give us uh, you know, the, these books to give away to our listeners. So, awesome. Thanks, CWNP. And, uh, and that's it. So if you guys have any questions, again, hit us up on Twitter or leave a comment in on our show notes. And we will see you guys on the next episode. See you guys. Thank you. <laughs>